I always, you know, loved film as a kid. Um, and went to the movies every weekend, pretty much. Um, you know, we'd go to Injunction City, Kansas, where I grew up. There was, there was four theaters back then, and uh, three, three theaters and a drive-in. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we would go to the movies every weekend. It was kind of like the Cosby kids, you know, the whole neighborhood would go to the movies, you know. And one of my, uh, one of my favorite memories is this thing of, it was called the Coke Top Movies. And uh, if you had eight Coke Tops from the bottle, Coke bottle, you could go to a, the summer movie and you, when you, you just had eight Coke Tops and you would, when you walk in, you dropped them in this big box. And uh, you got into the movies for these eight Coke Tops. And, uh, you know, we went to the movies all the time. And, and then, of course, you know, um, I knew then I was really, my, my brother tells me the story that for, for my, I think I was 10 years old and my mother asked me what I wanted for my birthday. And I said I wanted the soundtrack to the movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And they were like going like, what are you? What are you? What are you talking about? And, and my brother knew that he said, "I knew you were weird." <laughs> uh, but um, uh, but yeah, then the black exploitation movies and Gordon Parks was a huge thing as well, you know. And uh, when you sent me that photo of of Boss Nigga, and that was such a great time to really be into film, um, you know. You 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 know you just Gordon Parks, especially being a, a Kansan, right. was, um, you know, a huge influence and inspiration, really. You know, I remember seeing uh, a, um, a, sh a little brief, little, you know, documentary about him um, uh, after a, a film on, on a Friday night. And it was about him making a learning tree in Kansas. And that was the first time I really kind of saw him and he had the cowboy hat and he was, he was this black director making a movie in Kansas, you know, and you're going like, wow, you know, that's, man, I could do that maybe, you know, and, and anyway, that's, that's really kind of how I got into it. I wrote plays because I didn't have access to film and, you know, always really wanted to have, you know, to do film, there just wasn't any film around. I remember I did, we did a, in high school, I had this really hip uh, English teacher and we did a, a film, a little short film that that uh, I wrote, and uh, and it was kind of like a black exploitation <laughs> movie, you know, and uh, uh, and you know the the it was one of those reel to reel video machines, you know, and it had the it was like this huge huge camera, this huge recording machine, and uh, God, I wish I had to copy that thing, but um, uh, but th that was you know that was really frustrating as a kid because. You know, my parents didn't have the money to buy a movie camera or anything like that. You know, the, the, back then it was the Super 8 cameras and that kind of thing and, and uh, didn't have access to that. So I wrote plays and I'm really, I'm really glad I made that choice. We were just talking about that, about how, you know, you, you do what is in front of you. You know, you do what you have and you make that work for you. And uh, so I was fortunate. I was able to kind of write plays and, and that got me into um, you know, that eventually would get me into NYU film school was my play, uh, Ninth Street. <laughs> Making our first film, you know, we, this, our first film, Ninth Street, and, and then finally got to make a, a 35 millimeter film with, uh, The Only Good Indian. Um, and CSA, there was a lot of film in CSA and some video and some film. But, um, you know, it was a, it was a, you know, a huge process and uh, labs. I mean, we never could get, we never, being in Kansas, you never get dailies, you get weeklies. And uh, so that was a, a huge thing. And, and of course, you know, we thought that was the way it is because, you know, that was the way it was and you accepted that reality. Uh, but it, it made things a little more difficult. And uh, now that, you know, it is so much easier to make a film on so many levels and but there's problems with that because I think young people especially uh, because it is digital they'll shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and and um, and that's that's not really knowing the craft you know and um, you uh, you know you know the, the the inclination to not be as disciplined is always there now and uh, so anyway, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, it's been a real godsend 
you know, we have a red camera that we use here, and um, and that's been it's enabled me to make you know the last films I've made, the last two films I've made, um, you know, it enabled me to make them for very low budgets, and um, so in, in, in that sense, I try to use it as real a real sense of freedom of expression in that sense garbage uh, directing you know you know when with the no planning and kind of just going going in and just kind of because you know you can shoot so much and it doesn't cost anything you don't have to plan then and um, uh, but like with with Chirac you know it was it was you know very well planned out you know Spike's obviously a great director and and uh, you know he had a great team of people with him and that's that's the thing that when you get to work on a big film with a with a larger budget, you really see how it's it's a huge team effort, and and when you have the best people working with you, you know the best performers, and you know his cinematographer was really really great. He directed uh, <coughs> he was a director of photography for uh, Straight Outta Compton too, um, and just just you know it just makes you know everything up, just puts everything on another level. Story story is it. And, and I, I think that a lot of the film schools that they have now, there's a lot of film schools that are really, really production schools and they teach production. And, and that's obviously really important, but, but you've got a lot of young filmmakers that, are, that really don't understand story and really don't really care about story and they don't know how to direct actors. And in the fact that, that I got that theater background, I'm so glad I got that because, for instance, Chirac, I, w I was in the play Lys Estrada in, as an undergrad. And when I was in that play, you know, I, the language of that play, I thought to myself, this really has connections to African Americans. And I thought this could really make a really cool story if I turned it into a modern day story and embraced the African American traditions of spoken word and rap and rhyme and all that stuff and um, and so it, it you know it just broadens you so much when you get into story and you, and you work directly with actors and and theater and language and and all of those things that uh, can really inform your filmmaking um, I think I think that a lot of Film schools don't really do that now, and 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 you kind of can see it. You can see where, you know, students are really technically very proficient, but not not in working with actors and not in understanding story or telling story. And and so when you know someone writes a script and it's got a problem, they're not able to really find the problem because they don't really understand the you know how story works. One, one of the things that's, that's good and bad about this new reality is that uh, a lot of stuff getting made, a lot, a lot, a lot of stories being told, a lot of films being made, and, and that's a really great thing on so many levels, but then on some level, it's, it's kind of, there's just too much out there, and, um, uh, and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of hurt the market a little bit. You know, and um, I, I don't know how that's going to eventually play out, but it's, but it's, you know, it's challenging now. I mean, the deal that I got for my film CSA, very different deal for the movies you get now, and uh, so that that reality of the marketplace is is one of the challenging things for I think students. You know, it's it's very easy to make a film now, and uh, and so there's a lot of them out there now, and. Uh, the question is: Is it is it you know is it really worth our time and worth our while? And uh, and that that kind of becomes the the challenge I think for all of us is that you have to you know you know when you think about the movies in the 70s, um, I'm teaching a, a film a, a class on black exploitation films right now, and uh, one of the things think, things about those films was that you know they, the production level might have been lacking at times. But the stories they told, we were so hungry for those stories that you, you didn't care about the production values. And now you've almost kind of got the opposite problem, where you've got great production values, but you don't care anything about the stories that they tell you. I'm glad I never believed that the, you had to be on one of the coasts to be a filmmaker. I mean, film is, has become very democratic, and I think it's always been that way, but it's become even more so. And... Um, you know, I, I, 
uh, sold my first screenplay to 20th Century Fox, and I had never been to Los Angeles, and um, and I didn't even go when I sold sold the script, and uh, you know. I've made six feature films, uh, living in Lawrence, Kansas, and I just made a movie with with uh, Spike Lee, and I've just got hired to make another film, to write another movie, um, and I live in Lawrence, Kansas. And so the thing I always tell my students, it's not where you live, it's, it's what you're doing. And, um, you know, is it a little harder at times? Do I feel like I'm out of the loop a little times? Sometimes you feel that way. But I also know that um, I miss a lot of the baloney that happens in the film business where I'm taking meetings and they're going no place. So when they're interested in what I'm doing, uh, they will fly me out there. And, um, and so the meeting is about something really important and not a fishing expedition where you're trying to maybe get a gig and you have no, <laughs> you know, no, real, no real sense of whether you're going to get it or not.